everybody. So this is the title of my talk, Why uh, Photographing Dirty Women, Why Was Photography Invented? And here is the man of my academic dreams. This is Arthur J. Mumby, a mid-Victorian man, a civil servant, a poet, a diary keeper, a note taker, and a sketcher from life. Mudlarks in the Thames, women who scavenged for objects in the fetid mud of the Thames. Sketched in 1855, a record of his urban wanderings. But most significantly for me, he was a collector of the very first commercially made photographic representations of working class women in London and beyond. His fascinating archive now held in Trinity College in Cambridge, this diverse collection records his thoughts, debates, observations on the class and gender in construction, offering a record of that very interface between class and gender and the invention of photography itself. This is a moment of class in construction in which now established definitions of difference had to be defined. Man, woman, working class man or working class woman, middle class man or middle class woman, large or small, strong or weak, inside or outside, white or black, clean or dirty, identities that needed to be fixed. The desire for photography is disclosed before photography appeared on the scene. A need for a protected, distant look at real working class difference, signposting the success of this invention. Mumby was an archetype, seeking out, sketching and writing up his encounters with the new subject position of the working class woman, securing his own identity through her difference. His activities demonstrate a desire for a medium which could function as an authentic trace of the new urban classes, to simulate or replicate or displace the discomforting act of looking in the street. Meandering through St James's Park in 1864, Mumby set himself the task of counting the ragged, desolate heaps of the destitute poor visible in their hundreds, offering a personal account of the abstracted concept of the psychological damage of urbanisation, in which the metropolitan man begins to think with his head and not with his heart, the dispassionate observer of the flaneur. The need for photography is first articulated in painting, with the modern practice of sketching from life, the replication of recognisable scenes from the metropolis. Mumby asks Holman Hunt to confirm for him that the model he used in his painting were true Jews. These paintings speak to the eye as closely as possible, replicating the material encounter with difference. His muse, Hannah Colwick, a real working class woman, the lowest of the low, a maid of all work and his later secret wife, became his model in his photographic experimentations. As he attempts to find a medium by which he could capture, interrogate and return to time and time again to examine the essence of class difference. In 1855, he instructs Hannah to go to the photographer to be taken in her dirt. Posed with the signs of her working class femaleness, put on display her labouring body, her activity, her role, her dirt. 
These re her, this relationship allowed him to experiment with the emerging signs of class, ironically revealing the deception of both class and the photographic message itself. The working class body of Hannah, he realised, could be made to signify anything. A servant, a maid, an upper class woman, a chimney sweep, or even a working class man, depending on what signs were placed onto her body. Class, he realised, was deception. The photograph, he realised, could lie. Mistrusting this photographic veracity from the start, Mumby still searching, wandering, recording, viewing and sketching working class women in London, begins to notice the rising trade in domestic photography of the working class, <laughs> the Sunday trade. Photographs of working class women pictured in their Sunday best, dressed to impress for the taking of their likeness. Mumby read such women as deceptors, too, too vain to be taken as they really were. Instead, he sought out photographs of working class women au naturel, by which he meant photographs which for him could contain the right signs to signify working classness. Thus, Mumby began to search for something that didn't actually exist with this deception in mind. To ensure photographic veracity, Mumby sought to close the space between the thing in the real and the phot photographic trace. He watched a woman in the street as a flaneur. He confirmed her status as a true working class woman. He plucked her off the street. He took her to the photographic studio. He watches the photographic trace being made, ensuring that no deception has occurred. 1864, a dust woman, a woman photographed in her dirt, the now lost sister of the archetype dustman. My old man's a dustman, he wears a dustman's hat, he wears god blimey trousers and he lives in a council flat. Such encounters, Mumby notes, were fraught with danger and emotion and on, and on most cases were unsuccessful. Mumby modifies his criteria, fueled by the new cultural knowledge from the commercial photographers that working class women, they tell him, often steal their mistress's clothes. Best working class dress for him can now signify class pride. Working class women, they tell him, in every way try to hide their large, dirty working class hands. Mobilising this knowledge, Mumby and the knowledge he had of Hannah, Mumby decides to buy the commercial photographs, but he will only buy a photograph of a working class woman in Sunday dress when the bodily sign of her large hands has been traced. Sometimes, Mumby's desire for class authenticity matched with the pride of working class labour for the women themselves. And some of these were, as he confirms, his most successful finds. This archive reminds us that meaning does not reside within a photograph itself, but in the cultural meanings we bring to the viewing of the traced image that activates the signs within it confirming the constructed nature of photographic truth itself and the fabricated nature of class difference. That's my book, by the way, that picture. <laughs> Thank you very much.